Good day students. Today we're going to look at another example of hypothesis testing. The first video that we did on hypothesis testing you saw one sample z-test. This is going to look at a little bit of a different test so let's get through the problem and see what it's all about. It says the mean life of a battery for a TV remote control is 297 days and follows a normal distribution. The manufacturer has made changes to try to increase its life. A sample of 25 of the new batteries were tested in the same remote control. The mean life was 309 days with a standard deviation of 15 days. Using a level of significance of 0 0.05, can we conclude the mean life of the battery has increased? Okay. Now in hypothesis testing, we normally follow a five-step process there. Now I've written the summary of the steps in the hypothesis testing there. So again, number one, establish the null hypothesis, HO, and the alternate hypothesis, H1, which I call HA, same thing. Select the level of significance, which is alpha. Select an appropriate test statistic. Number four, formulate a decision rule based on steps one, two, and three above. Five, make a decision regarding the null hypothesis based on sample information. And interpret the results of the test. Okay. So, I don't need to keep that there, I'll just take that away, but you'll see down below in a box there I have uh, those five steps summarized and we'll fill that box in as we go each time in, in this series of videos on hypothesis testing. So we're dealing with a battery and a battery life, how long it lasts. It tends to last longer in remote controls than in other devices. As you can see on the right I have a picture of a battery there. So that's what we're talking about. The mean life of the type of battery of, like that, not necessarily Duracell, obviously. Okay, now what I like to do when I always start one of these problems is list out what I know about the population and list out what I know about the um, sample, of course, right? Okay, got my pen working. So let's start with the population. What do we know about the population? The mean life of a battery for a TV mode control, there it is right there, mu is 297 days. Okay. And then follows a normal distribution. The manufacturer has made changes to try to increase its life. A sample. So we're not given the standard deviation. So let's write that down. Standard deviation unknown. And that's going to be important to how we select our test statistic after. Alright. <clears throat> let's go now and look at the sample. Any information there about the sample? Well, I can see a sample size of 25. So there's a sample of 25. So N is 25. New batteries were tested into the. The mean life was 309 days. So we're given X bar, 309 days. And a standard deviation, which a standard deviation for a population is 15 days. And standard deviation is S in a lot of books, S sub X in some books. So I'll use, I think the calculator uses S sub X. <coughs> so I'll use that as well. Alright, now we have our information written down about the population and sample. So let's run through our steps. First thing I'm going to look at is the null and alternate hypothesis. How do we write those? Well, remember the alternate hypothesis is usually found in the wording of the problem. And I see increased when I say that, it's saying that mu is greater than, has increased than the population of the, or the mean of the population, right? That means the, and HO is usually the status quo, no changes, so HO would be mu less than or equal to 297, right? So that's not too bad to come up with. Now remember the equal sign is always found in the null hypothesis. See it right there? Less than or equal to. So it indeed is. So there's our hypothesis. Now knowing that I'm t doing u mu greater than 297 also tells me a couple of things. It tells me I'm doing a right tailed test. And if I'm doing a right tailed test, the area is what? Right tail test tells me what? My area, remember how the calculator is programmed, so for area of a calc, right, right tailed, it's 1 minus alpha, right? 
for the area because my value is going to be up here somewhere just look down at the chart right and the calculator calculates it this way right from here up so in order to get this area here I have to cal I have to do one minus alpha okay so the area for a right tailed test is one minus alpha now what is alpha in this case we usually sometimes you have to force to choose it if it's not given but in most of our word problems of course it's going to be given for you so this is an easy step level of significance is 0 0.05 now alpha remember what that is that's the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis right now next one is choose your test st statistic is it going to be a z test t test proportional testing what are we doing here well now look at the information given sigma is unknown and in uh, some textbooks it tells you right away that's an automatic t test okay however some books combine that with the population size if its population size is greater than 30 it's a z test even if sigma is unknown so there are different but they, their numbers are so close when they get over 30 it makes really no difference anyway but for our purposes n is 25 the sample size sigma is unknown so it's definitely a t-test okay so this is a t-test okay and if they ask you why just say sigma is unknown okay Decision rule is the next step, but before we calculate decision rules, always a bit of work to do for steps four and five. Okay, so let's take step four down here and have a look. Now, we know it's a t-test. We have to come up with a critical value to test against. Some people call this the critical value test, or a critical value step, either or. So in number four here, we have to come up with t, and I label it cv for critical value. Okay, how do I find that value? Well, in the old days, and I'll just do this once, I won't do it in other videos, but the first t-test I've done, so I'll do how we used to find them in the old days. We used to have to look them up in a chart. Now, a chart just popped in there, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So, before we had our magic calculators, we had to do this by hand, and you can see degrees of freedom is an important thing here now degrees of freedom your teachers probably explained to you already degrees of freedom df see that right there that's equal to n minus one so we have a sample size of 25 our degrees of freedom are 24 see it in that column and of course our level of significance for a one-tailed test is 0 0.05 and we look down go across here till we find it and 0 0.05 so the value is 1.711 okay 1.711 now remember that value because we're going to do it again on the calculator so let's jump over here to the calculator okay why does the calculator ask us look at distribution d-i-s-t-r see it there above the bars so those are found there's where we find inverse norm or inverse t when we're trying to look for these critical values inverse t in this case and it asks you for two things the area remember we talked about that that's one minus alpha so one minus point zero five which is point nine five degrees of freedom is next and they're asking right which we know is n minus one so in this case twenty four and we'll paste that a couple of times and look what we get one point one point seven one and it's rounded off to one on the chart the exact same value. So what we write over here is the following. We write inverse t, okay, remember it's area and degrees of freedom. So you can write it like that. Inverse t therefore is area, which in this case is 1 minus alpha. Degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So inverse t 1 minus alpha is 0.95 and n minus 1 is 24 and that value was 1.711 now what does that mean to what we have on the chart over here so 1.711 is roughly right here okay roughly and don't worry about being particular 1.711 okay now what it means is that this area in here okay 
which is 0 0.05. Remember, this is alpha, 0 0.05. That's the probability of doing what? Rejecting the null hypothesis. OK, that means anything below that, we are going to accept the null hypothesis. OK, or do not reject, technically, you're supposed to say. So decision rule is what? If our t value we get in step, so if our t value we get in step 5 is greater than 1.711, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. So if our t value is greater than 1.711, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. That's what it's saying. Okay? That's our decision rule. Now step five, you actually run the test. Okay? So let's do that in step five. Now how do we run the test? Well, we can do it a couple of ways, but the very first time I'll do it, and I'll call this smaller t your test value. And this is found by doing the formula mean of the sample minus the mean of the population divided by the standard deviation of the sample, which is used in place of um, sigma since we don't know it. So it's a point estimate, right? And x bar uh, sx divided by root n. Okay. Now if we do that calculation, let's see what we get. We got uh, 309 is the mean of the sample minus the mean of the population 297 divided by the standard deviation of the sample using that as a point estimate of the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n which is 25. Now this turns out to be exactly 4.0. You can check it on your calculator if you wish. Okay. 4.0. Now, are we going to do it that way? No. We're going to do it on the calculator. But I just wanted to show you where the formula, you know, what we used to do or what, how, how to use that formula as well. So we're going to the calculator now. now I'll, I'll clear that. Remember what to do. Stat. Okay. Hit the stat button. Go across to tests. All your tests are here. Now this is a t-test, it's the second one, with one sample. Now you notice one sample is not written there, just t-test. So that's understood to be the one sample t-test. You hit enter. Now stats is highlighted here, in which we are using the statistics. We don't have the raw data of all 25 in the sample. So we don't use the other one unless we have the raw data. Okay. Now we'll go down to the first one, which is the mean, which is 297 days. Then we go to the mean of the sample, which is 309 days. Standard deviation of the sample, which is 15 days. And the population size, or the sample size, which is 25. Now, what test are we doing? It's a right tailed test. So go across to greater than, make sure that's highlighted, enter, and then hit calculate. And you notice the t value did come out to be exactly 4, same as our formula. And you know we get a p value, a probability value of point, it's negative 4, e to the negative 4, that's three zeros. We'll talk about that after. So, where is this value? Let's make a decision now. Where is the value 4? Well, it indeed is above up here, isn't it? Right? So it's up there somewhere at 4 standard deviations above, so it is indeed in the reject region, so our conclusion is we reject HO. Let me write that right in the conclusion line. <coughs> Excuse me. Reject HO and ex therefore accept HA. Or H1 if you called it H1. Okay? Now, again, just to run, check the probability uh, number there. The P number on our calculator was 0 0.000263. Which is really very close to zero. And remember, if P is less than alpha, it's another reason or another way we can reject the alternate hypothesis or the null hypothesis. So this is an extra test. We don't use a lot of people some people use this, some people use the other test, the T test, so but it does make it does have the same conclusion, doesn't it?
that we reject the null hypothesis because p is less than alpha. Now, only last thing left to do is to write H A in words. You know, write what we our conclusion, I should say, in words. All right. So I'll do that right here. What does it mean to accept H A? It means accept H A. Look, what H A is greater than 297. So we know we can say a general statement, something like the mean life of the battery. The mean life of the battery. Okay, is greater than. Two hundred and ninety seven hours or days, sorry, days. Okay? So that's what it's saying. The mean life of the battery is greater than two hundred and ninety seven days. Okay? So there's a, a full solution to a one sample t test. In the next video we'll look at a we're gonna do a sample of an example of two samples, right? Two samples Z or two samples Z, uh, t tests.